After decades of improvement, JavaScript has become one of the most popular programming languages of all time. It all started in the year 1995 when Brendan Eich created JavaScript within a span of 10 days. Since then, it's seen multiple versions, updates, and has grown to the next level. Today, JavaScript forms the heart and soul of web development. So if you are interested in learning this marvelous language, here is Vajiha from Edureka with a whole new exciting session on JavaScript Roadmap. Before starting off, let's take a quick look at what's in store for you guys. To begin with, we shall first understand why it is important to learn JavaScript and the companies that are hiring JavaScript developers. Following that, we shall understand what exactly is JavaScript, its features and the benefits of using JavaScript. Following that, we'll be discussing the roadmap to learn JavaScript. Within this, we'll be discussing how you can actually start off and then move on learning the basics and the advanced concepts of JavaScript. Finally, we'll be discussing about the project-oriented learning approach. So before we begin, just make sure you're subscribed to our channel and hit that bell icon to stay updated with all the latest Edureka videos. Also, if you are interested in getting an online training certification in full-stack web development, check out the link given in the description box below. So coming back towards the session, why do you think it is so important to learn JavaScript? Well, JavaScript has always been on the list of popular programming languages. According to the Stack Overflow survey, for the seventh year in a row, JavaScript has remained the most popular and commonly used programming language. Not just that, according to the latest survey, JavaScript is also the second most wanted and the tenth most loved programming language across the globe. JavaScript is mainly known for creating beautiful web pages and applications. An example of this is Google Maps. If you want to explore a specific map, all you have to do is click and drag with the mouse. And what sort of language could do that? Yes, you guessed it right. It's JavaScript. JavaScript can also be used in smartwatches. An example of this is the popular smartwatch maker called as Pebble. Pebble has created Pebble.js, which is a small JavaScript framework that allows a developer to create an application for the Pebble line of watches in JavaScript. Some of the most popular websites that make use of JavaScript include Google, Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, etc. Among things like mobile applications, digital art, web servers, and server applications, JavaScript can also be used to make games. A lot of developers are building small-scale games and apps using JavaScript. Another major reason for JavaScript's popularity is the availability of JavaScript frameworks. Some of the most important and trending JavaScript frameworks include Angular, React, jQuery, and Meteor. Angular is Google's web development framework which provides a set of modern development and design features for rapid application development. React.js is another JavaScript library maintained by Facebook and it's also behind the user interface of Facebook and Instagram. Meteor.js is mainly used for providing backend development. Using JavaScript on the backend to save time and build expertise is one of the major ideas behind Meteor. jQuery jQuery can be used when you want to extend your website and make it more interactive. Companies like Google, WordPress, and IBM rely on jQuery. Okay, so having said that, let us take a look at a few other companies that make use of JavaScript. Some of the top organizations include Microsoft, PayPal, Netflix, Groupon, Google, Walmart, Facebook, etc. The average salary of a JavaScript developer is around $53,000 per annum. Okay. So having said that, I think it's enough to justify why JavaScript is so important. Now let's move on and understand what exactly is JavaScript. JavaScript is a high-level interpreted programming language used to make web pages more interactive. It is a very powerful client-side scripting language that makes your web page more lively and interactive. JavaScript is a programming language that helps you implement a complex and beautiful design on web pages. If you want a web page to look alive, and do a lot more than just staring at you, JavaScript is a must. Anyone who is familiar with JavaScript knows that it has something to do with HTML and CSS. But what exactly is the relationship between these three? So let me explain this with an analogy. Think of HTML as a skeleton of the web. It is basically used for displaying the web. On the other hand, CSS is like the clothes. As the name says, CSS is the acronym for cascading style sheets and it's used for styling purposes. 
Then there is JavaScript which puts life into a web page. Just like how kids move around using a skateboard, the web page also moves with the help of JavaScript. Now JavaScript has a number of remarkable features. So let's take a look at some of them. It's a scripting language and not Java. In fact, JavaScript has nothing to do with Java. Then why do you think it's called as JavaScript? When JavaScript was first released, it was called as Mocha. It was later renamed to LiveScript and then to JavaScript when Netscape founded JavaScript and Sun did a license agreement. It's an object-based scripting language which supports polymorphism, encapsulation and to some extent inheritance as well. JavaScript is an interpreted language. It does not have to be compiled like Java and C and therefore it does not require a compiler. JavaScript runs in a browser. You can run it on Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Safari, etc. JavaScript can execute not only in the browser but also on the server and any device which has a JavaScript engine. So having spoken about the features, let's take a look at some of the benefits of using JavaScript. There has to be a reason why so many developers love working with JavaScript. Well, there are several benefits of using JavaScript for developing web applications. First of all, it is easy to learn and simple to implement. It is a weak type programming language unlike strong type programming languages like Java and C++. This means that it does not have strict rules for coding unlike Java and C++. Next up is the speed of JavaScript. In today's world, it's all about being fast and JavaScript is mainly a client-side programming language that is very fast because any code can run immediately instead of having to contact the server and wait for an answer. Also, like I've already mentioned before, it provides a rich set of frameworks like Angular, React, jQuery, etc. It helps you build interactive websites. To execute JavaScript, all you need is a browser like Google Chrome or Internet Explorer and then you can do all sorts of stuffs you wish to do with your website. JavaScript is platform independent and it's supported by all major browsers like Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Safari, etc. Now that you have a brief idea of what exactly is JavaScript and its features and benefits, let's move on and take a look at the roadmap to learn JavaScript. Now JavaScript is necessary for anyone who wants to make their future in web development or just anyone who is a tech enthusiast. So in case you're one among them, here is a roadmap that you will need to follow so as to master this amazing programming language. Now before you start off with learning anything, make sure you have the right attitude and intention. The road to learning JavaScript does not start from getting started with JavaScript itself. There are a few key points that you will need to know before you actually start off and they are figuring out the purpose to learn JavaScript, the prerequisites and the preparation. Figuring out the purpose to learn JavaScript. Now it might seem very obvious but it is certainly very important that you have a clear picture of why you need to learn JavaScript. There can be a number of reasons to learn it whether it is to fetch a specific JS developer job or to enhance your skill set, etc. The reason why you must be clear in your intentions is to figure out what exactly you must learn in JavaScript and to what extent. For example, if you are looking for a front-end developer job, it is very important that you have in-depth knowledge of JavaScript. On the other hand, if you are looking for a back-end developer job, a limited amount of knowledge would be sufficient. However, this example is just for the sake of making you understand why you must be clear with your intentions and it is not specific to the job roles of front-end and back-end developers because that varies across organizations and their needs. The prerequisites to learn JavaScript. Since JavaScript most often deals with the front-end of the web applications, it is very much necessary that you have sound knowledge of other front-end technologies like HTML and CSS. HTML basically stands for Hypertext Markup Language and it is the standard markup language for creating web pages and applications. It is used to describe the structure of web pages using markup. How does HTML exactly work? HTML documents end with a .html or .htm extension. You can view it using the web browser. The browser reads the HTML file and renders its content for the user to view it. Each HTML page consists of a set of tags or elements which are known as the building blocks of web pages. They create a hierarchy that structures the content into sections, paragraphs, headings and other content blocks. 
CSS basically stands for cascading style sheets. CSS, it is a technology proposed and developed by the World Wide Web Consortium or the W3C for short. It was released to help the free web developers from the tedious process of inline styling and make styling a separate entity in itself. Today, if you were to download an excerpt of a functioning web page, you will find a lot of files and folders, but the three major elements are HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Before CSS was released, there was only HTML and JavaScript. Developers would have to sit and style each individual element, which is not just a tedious task, but also a cumbersome process. Today, with the help of CSS, enterprise level websites can be styled in a matter of hours. Preparation. This step basically involves gathering the right information and scheduling a routine to learn JS. Now, if you have to prepare something to learn, the first thing that you will need is the sources of information. There are various sources of information that you can make use of to learn JavaScript. Some of them are books, official documentation, blogs, and videos. Books are indeed your best friends. The most important source of information for a new programmer is a book. Books give you the complete history, definitions, examples, code snippets, and codes as well. For a student, books serve as the primary source of information. This will not just increase your knowledge, but they also help you build your vocabulary. However, it must be noted that books are not limited just for students. There are advanced JavaScript books available in the market to learn the advanced topics as well. Blog tutorials. Another free online source of information are blogs. Blogs are usually written by those who have hands-on knowledge of the subject. There are a number of blogs that will help you learn with various kinds of examples. Many of the bloggers also provide the complete code along with the outputs, which will help you see the code and also understand its functionality. If you want dedicated blogs regarding JavaScript, you can check out Edureka's blog page by simply typing in edureka.co slash blog. Video tutorials. We as humans tend to learn more from what we see than what we read. To help you in this, a number of programmers upload their work in terms of videos. Watching them will surely help you learn better because of the visualization effect. From single topics to complete tutorials and full courses, you can easily access any video of your choice. If you wish to watch videos on JavaScript, make sure to check out Edureka's YouTube channel. Now, once you have all the sources ready, you will need to follow a routine to stay in touch with the subject. Here are some of the tips that will help you start off. The first and foremost is to schedule a timetable for yourself. The most important thing that you must value is your time. Give some time from your complete day to learn JavaScript. Make it your daily routine. If you are irregular, it's natural that you will not remember the concept that you had read in your previous session. Select what you have to learn. If you're very new to learning JavaScript and do not have any idea about it, you must start off with the basic fundamentals. For those who have some brief idea about it, it's better to revise the fundamentals and then move on towards the advanced topics. The next step is to take one step at a time. Remember that it is very important for you not to move ahead if you do not understand even a single word. If you let go of something now, it's going to pile up and later, after a while, you will start to feel that it's very difficult. Make sure to practice what you went through. This is a very important step. Here is where you will understand how your code works and where you're making mistakes. It does not matter even if it is the simplest Hello World program as well, but write it down both on paper and on your execution platforms. Indeed, practice does make you perfect. Concentrate on the syntax as it is very important for you to learn it. Understand the basics. Make sure that you clearly understand the basic concepts that you are going to encounter every now and then. Finally, write programs. Take up more and more programs and try to find a solution to them by yourself. Initially, take up programs that will just make you familiar with JavaScript and its syntax and later on you can move towards more complex ones. So that was about how to get started off. Next. Let's take a step further and understand what are the basics that you need to know in order to learn JavaScript. Under this section, we're going to be understanding what exactly is the ECMAScript, a brief history of JavaScript and JavaScript application architecture. Following that, we're going to take a look at the basic fundamentals of JavaScript as well. 
Okay, so what exactly is ECMAScript? ECMAScript is a general purpose programming language standardized by ECMA International according to the document ECMA 262. It is a JavaScript standard meant to ensure the interoperability of web pages across different web browsers. ECMAScript is commonly used for client side scripting on the World Wide Web and it is increasingly being used for writing server applications and services using Node.js. So, taking a look at the brief history of JavaScript, Netscape Communications had the vision that web needed a way to become more dynamic. They wanted animations, interactions, and other forms of small animations as a part of the web for the future. The goal was to seek ways to expand the web. And this is what exactly gave birth to JavaScript. Burden Ike, the father of JavaScript, was contracted by Netscape Communications to develop a scheme for the browser. The vision was to create something that was easy to grasp syntactically, dynamic, to reduce the verbosity, speed up development, and a language that was powerful. It is important over here to note that Java was considered unsuitable for the type of audience that would consume Mocha. The audience basically consisted of scripters, designers, etc. And Java took a lot more effort and time even to execute simple tasks. So the idea was to make Java available for big, professional, component writers while Mocha would be used for small scripting tasks. In December 1995, Netscape Communications and Sun closed the deal and Mocha or LiveScript was renamed as JavaScript. It was presented as a scripting language for small client tasks in the browser while Java was promoted as the bigger professional tool to develop rich web components. So now moving on towards JavaScript application architecture. Now if you wish to learn JavaScript, it is very important that you understand its architecture. This gives you a better understanding of how exactly JavaScript works in the web applications. It is important to note that the architecture of JavaScript application depends on the size and the complexity of that particular application. However, we can broadly classify the architectures into three subcategories. The first is typical JavaScript architecture. Second, framework based typical JavaScript architecture and third, advanced JavaScript architecture. Typical JavaScript architecture. JavaScript applications use the bottom up approach by default. The UI or the user interface is always placed at the center of development at any point of time. This JavaScript architecture suits simple applications. However, it is important to note that it cannot be used for complex ones. Framework based typical JavaScript architecture. To solve the issue of the previous architecture, framework based architecture came into use. In the framework based typical JavaScript architecture, the UI still remains the center of development but the architecture is much more advanced compared to the previous version. It involves detailing the simplistic view of the JavaScript application architecture. It is very effective for solving complex problems as it implements the MVC or the MVVM pattern to the application. The business and the presentation concerns are separate, making it easy to work with. The advanced JavaScript architecture. Even though the framework based typical JavaScript architecture was good, it wasn't good enough for even more complex applications. There were problems such as controller being busy, maintenance and development costs, etc. To solve this problem, the advanced JavaScript architecture was created. In this architecture, the business and the user interface logics are separated and it also can adjust to the needs of the complex applications with ease. Not just that, the UI is no more the center of these applications, thereby increasing the application's usability. Now that you have a brief idea of the JavaScript application architecture, the next thing that you will need to catch up with are the basic fundamentals of JavaScript. This basically includes variables, constants, data types, objects, arrays, functions, conditional statements, loops, and switch cases. I'm not going to get into the details of this in this session, as you can explore them via Edureka's JavaScript tutorials, the link to which I'll be sharing in the description box below. Okay, so once you've understood each of these basic fundamentals, you can move ahead towards the advanced topics such as functions that includes recursion, closure, arrow functions, rest parameters and spread operators, global objects, 
function objects, set timeout and set interval, function binding, etc. Next are JavaScript namespaces, prototypes, error handling in JavaScript, modules in JavaScript, chaining JavaScript methods, and generators. So just like the basic fundamentals, the advanced topics are also covered within the advanced JavaScript tutorial, the link to which I'll be giving in the description box below. Okay, so once you've understood the basic fundamentals and the advanced concepts, you can move on to create projects using JavaScript. When you create a project, you will have a 360 degree learning. This is because while creating a project, you will have to do everything by yourself. This way, you will make use of the basic and the advanced concepts, thereby increasing your knowledge. It is important to remember that you do not have to master the world in your first project itself. So start off by choosing a very simple one, completed by yourself and do not copy paste the code from elsewhere. As you proceed, you can take up bigger projects and work on them. Now it is very much obvious that you will face difficulties while making projects. But this comes with the reward of learning. If you are stuck at some point in the project, try to break down the problem into minor parts and then work on each part one at a time. JavaScript projects can be divided into three levels that is basic, intermediate and advanced. To know more about this, check out Edureka's JavaScript projects tutorial, the link to which is also given in the description box below. So this brings us to the end of the session. I hope you have enjoyed and learned something new. In case you have any doubts or queries, please do let me know in the comment section and I will revert to you at the earliest. We'll be back with more and more exciting sessions. But till then, goodbye and take care.